Hey friends, this week I'm sharing what happened when I sprayed the all-in-one Heirloom Traditions paint. A few weeks ago I tried out the paint for the first time and I loved it, but I did not care for the textured finish that it left behind. So here I am trying to spray it on instead. I added a cool herringbone accent to the drawer too, and I'll share how that all went down as well. Alright, so here's the piece I worked on. A cute little farmhouse homemade cabinet that was at the thrift store for only $25. I'm not sure what it was painted with, whatever it was, it was stuck on pretty well, but there were a lot of drips and brush marks and just not very good coverage overall. First, I took everything apart. I removed the knobs, pried off the wood things to remove the glass, pulled off the back, and unscrewed the hinges to take off the doors. That drawer kept getting stuck when I tried to close it, so I brushed some wax onto the tracks and sides of the drawers. And then it worked like new. It's honestly like magic. Then I cleaned the cabinet really well to make sure there wasn't wax, grease, or dirt on anything else. And then we sanded everything with 150 grit sandpaper to get rid of all of the brush marks in the paint. When they were all gone, we went back over everything with 220 grit sandpaper just to make sure that the 150 grit sandpaper didn't make everything feel really rough. It's really funny, there are so many things that you don't notice until you start working on a piece of furniture. While we were sanding, we saw that the back leg was a little bit damaged, so I filled that damage in with quick wood. I wanted this cabinet to look more modern and less primitive, so I marked some straight lines and cut the V-shaped base off with a jigsaw. And then I sanded it to make my janky cuts look straighter. The next day I moved the cabinet into my little paint room and cleaned it all off. If you look close at the paint, you can see that there were a lot of bleed through stains coming through the old white paint. And even though I was planning to paint it a dark color, I did not want to see those stains come through my paint job. So I took the time to prime with my favorite stain blocking primer, Clear Shellac. And then I did another step that most of you will probably roll your eyes at. I primed with a black primer called Aqualock. I thinned it out so I could spray it on with my sprayer and have no texture. So why in the world did I prime it with two different primers? First of all, the cabinet was really spotty. Some parts had paint on it, some was down to the bare wood. When you paint over spotty stuff like that, you'll be able to see the difference between where there was raw wood and where the paint was. Using this Aqualock primer before I painted covered a lot of that stuff up. Clear shellac doesn't really help with the coverage issue. And the Aqualock primer does not provide true stain blocking power like shellac does. I love that this Aqualock primer is black. It's like a true black. If I would have primed it with a white primer, I would have needed more coats of my dark paint to cover all of the white primer. Yeah, a gray tinted primer would have worked well too, so if you have that stuff on hand, that's a great option. But I have a gallon of this Aqualock primer that I need to use. A quick note though, I didn't prime to help the paint stick. I have tested Heirloom Traditions paint over slick laminate without sanding and without primer and it sticks very, very well. So if you aren't worried about good coverage over raw wood, and if you aren't worried about bleed through, no primer is required at all. All right, so now that that is out of our way, I thinned out the Heirloom Traditions all-in-one paint with about 20% water. So I had 15 ounces of paint and I added about three ounces of water to it. and then I mix it all really well. 
I tested out the spray and then I sprayed everything. It sprayed with what seemed like was going to be a lot of texture. After an hour or so though, the paint was dry and it was all smooth. Then I sanded everything with 220 grit sandpaper and fine grit foam sanding pads. Between the primers and this first coat of paint, things were a little rough feeling. So this was just to make sure that everything felt nice and smooth. Then I sprayed the second coat of paint. I tried to spray it on thick enough that it didn't dry within 5 minutes, but not so thick that there were drips and runs in the paint. That middle ground thickness helped the paint level out and really feel smooth when it dried. In the end, I think I used around 3 fourths of the quart of paint, so I went through a decent amount of paint for this little cabinet. Alright, let's talk about the drawer. I lined up some popsicle sticks and marked a straight line on them so then I would cut them all the same size. Then I just cut them with some scissors. I wanted to make sure that I did it right so I laid out the design on the table before I put it on the drawer and then I glued them onto the drawer with Gorilla Glue. By the way, I saw this popsicle idea from Katie at Salvaged by K. Scott and I thought it was brilliant. I put a piece of wood on the top and clamped it down to keep the sticks from moving. The next day I popped off the clamps and used my multi-tool to cut off the sticks. It went really really well until I cut the bottom. The bottom of the drawer wasn't completely flat, so the sticks didn't stick as well to that part, especially when I started cutting and the vibrations, those sticks just popped right off. So I filled the little detail in with some wood filler and then I glued the sticks back on. Then the next day I cut the sticks again and I failed again in some spots. At this point I was so close so I sanded the edge of the sticks that were stuck on there with 80 grit sandpaper. Basically I didn't want them to stick out past the edge of the drawer or to be able to snag anything. And then after I did that I glued those last couple of pieces back on. Then the next day I cut them again but I got a little bit smarter this time and I clamped a piece of wood over them so they wouldn't wiggle off from the saw. And it worked great. So then I put some natural colored wood filler all over the sticks to fill in the gaps. Once it was dry I sanded the wood filler off and I ended up doing this whole wood filler thing two times just to make sure everything was filled in. It looked so good. So then I cleaned everything off and top coated the drawer with three coats of matte poly and this little sponge. Before I put everything back together I cleaned the paint off of the hinges. I just put them in boiling water for a few minutes and then the paint came off pretty easily. Alright, before I share the final reveal with you, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps get our videos out to more people and we really appreciate the love. So here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. I absolutely love it. The herringbone drawer is my favorite though. It definitely wasn't easy. 
and I don't know that I would want to do it on multiple drawers, but I love the way that it looks. What do you think?